How's it going everyone and welcome back to another Spoon Graphics video tutorial. Today's topic is cinemagraphs, which are those cool animated GIFs that you've no doubt seen on the web. They've exploded in popularity over the years with my old tutorial on my website from 2013, now seeing over 700,000 views. The trouble is, since my original tutorial was created, Photoshop now has a whole new timeline feature, which means you no longer have to edit videos frame by frame. That old technique still works great for cinemagraphs that include reversed footage, but today I'll show you some new and improved methods of creating cinemagraph images. You can make cinemagraphs from any video footage as long as there's a combination of stationary objects and looping elements. Ideally, it will have been filmed on a tripod to eliminate any shaking or camera movement too. Clips of escalators, subway trains or some kind of repetitive human action all produce great results, especially if there's other areas of the shot that can be frozen to enhance the effect. In this first example I'll show you how to make a basic cinemagraph by looping some video footage with similar start and end points, then freeze the majority of the image to focus the animation on one specific area. This particular video is a stock clip I bought from Video Hive named Girl Looking Towards the Ocean. So begin dragging the clip into Photoshop, which will open it up in the timeline panel. In the most recent versions of Photoshop, this will show the video as a continuous clip, as opposed to a series of individual frames like the old versions. Skim through the video and find a suitable portion to animate. This particular video hasn't been shot on a tripod, so you can see some shaky movement as you scrub along. All this is useless footage, so it can be trimmed away by dragging the clip inwards to shorten it. Drag the playhead back and forth and visualise how the footage could form a loop in motion. Here I'm watching the shape of the dress as it blows in the wind to find two frames where it looks similar. Drag the edges of the clip to your chosen playhead position to trim the clip down in size. Click the small gear icon in the timeline and ensure that the loop option is checked, then give the footage a test by pressing the play button. The whole video will play as normal and jump as it reaches the end but focus just on the area that you want to animate to see if there's a harsh jump or whether it blends smoothly. In my example, the dress is blowing so fast that simply matching two similar frames generates a seamless loop. Other subjects might require some blending though, which I'll cover later on. Now to freeze the rest of the footage, press Command and A to select all, then go to Edit and Copy Merged. Paste in this selection, then drag the layer out of the video group and to the top of the layer stack. Move the purple layer in the timeline above the footage and then align and trim it so it's the same length. Add a layer mask from within the layers panel and set up a round brush with a black fill. Move the playhead elsewhere along the timeline then begin painting over the dress area to allow the underlying video footage to show through. Move the playhead further along and continue erasing the static image to allow the whole dress to be visible as it flutters into various positions. This shows why the background of the video footage must be perfectly still, otherwise the effect just wouldn't work. Now in my example, the model moves her arms slightly during the clip, which means some more careful masking was required. You can quickly switch from erasing to restoring the layer mask by pressing the X key, which switches the background and foreground colours between black and white. After some clever adjustment of the mask, the cinemagraph effect is complete. This image can now be saved as an animated GIF or exported as a short video file to retain its full quality. Go to File, Export and Save for Web, then change the image settings to GIF, Selective and Diffusion. Reduce the size of the image at the bottom of the options screen to bring the file size down and don't forget to set it to Loop Forever. You can see the overall file size that the image will be in the bottom left corner. Alternatively, you can export the footage back to an MP4 video file at full size, which can then loop within some video editing software. Go to File, Export and Render Video, then hit the Render button. This next example shows how to create a loop where the footage needs blending. This technique works perfectly for running water or smoke, like you can see in this free footage that's named Agua Natural from Cover.com. Drag the video clip into Photoshop to load it into the timeline. The clip only needs to be a couple of seconds long, so drag the right edge inwards to shorten it. Drag the left edge inwards slightly to trim a little off the start, this will be used as part of the blending process later. Drag the whole video group onto the new layer icon in the layers panel to duplicate it, then move it to the right until it snaps to the end of the original clip. Extend the left edge back out, then trim the right edge so it lines up with the edge of the original. This will leave a small section of footage that ends on the same frame that the original clip starts on. 
Click the little arrow for this video group to expand the options, then match the player head up with the start of the clip and click the icon to add an opacity keyframe. Reduce the opacity of the layer to 0% in the layers panel, then move the player head along to near the end of the clip. Click this small diamond shaped icon to add a new keyframe, then bring the opacity back to 100%. Give the footage a test to see if the looping is noticeable. These particular clips blend so smoothly it's impossible to tell where they start and begin without looking at the timeline. Press Command and A to select all, then go to Edit and Copy Merged. Paste in this clip in, then move it to the top of the layer stack. Align the clip so it's the same length as the footage, then add a layer mask as before. Paint the mask with a soft brush in the area that should be animated. It's interesting to play around at this stage to see if it looks better with a small or large part of the image in motion. Cinemagraphs tend to work best with subtle motion, especially when they result in a surreal image like this. So I hope these tips for creating cinemagraphs in Adobe Photoshop helped you out. Have some fun creating them with your own camera, some stock video footage or even clips from famous movies. There's also a range of mobile apps that allow you to create this kind of effect from your camera phone videos, but doing it the manual way in Photoshop will always give you the most control over your results. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, a thumbs up to help recommend it with others would be really appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here, otherwise thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.